Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's episode of the Aesthetics and Wellness Podcast by Dr. Yusra. On today's episode, I have the amazing, incredible superstar, Dr. Almira Delali, dental surgeon, Invisalign wonder girl. She's available at our Liverpool clinic. And today we've discussed all things oral health, the impact of dental crowding, the importance of seeking good dental care from a regulated professional, and the downside of poor quality dentistry. This is a really important one, so please share it far and wide. And if you're thinking about having clear aligners or Invisalign, accessing any of these treatments, then we've also put a cheeky little link here for you to see what your smile may look like. I hope you enjoy. So today on the podcast, I have the amazing Dr. Elmira Delali. What a pleasure to have you. Thank you. What a pleasure to be here. It's so exciting to have you. So for those of you who don't know, who are first meeting Elmira, get ready for the ride. She is, <laughs> she is a powerhouse and just a ball of energy. You're such a joy to be around. I love your energy. And um, Dr. Elmira is joining us at the practice in Liverpool. She is our official lead dentist. She has a wealth of experience and such an interesting background as well. Dr. Almira does all kinds of uh, aesthetic dentistry is your main thing, but you do general dentistry as yes. well. You have a background in maxillofacial surgical training. You do a lot of orthodontic treatments. Smile design is your main thing. And that's one of the things that we're you know, quite, quite well known for is facial aesthetics and Trying to find the right dentist to join our team was um, tricky. I told you I had to kiss a few frogs to find the right <laughs> princess. And and actually, I think that's because it's not just ethos and character, but it's skill set as well. It's getting an A player who knows how to look after patients ethically and deliver on phenomenal tr- results and, and outcomes of success. On deliver facially aesthetic driven smile design. And I know how passionate you are. You're in the clinic until late in the evening. You spend so long with your patients. You've done, I don't even know how many courses. I've seen, I met one of your previous bosses, your other bosses who who told me that you did seven A-levels and got seven yes. A-stars. Unheard of, really. <laughs> um, you're phenomenal, genuinely. And it's such a pleasure to have you. And I want all of our followers to learn from you, hear what you have to offer. And really with a particular reference to one of the main things that you do, which is smile design and orthodontics fix aligners. So welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, yes, as you rightly said, I, I do work hard, but I absolutely love what I do. And that's what makes it worth. I Just a little bit of background about me. I basically moved away from Iran when I was 17. Mm-hmm. I didn't know a word of English and I worked so hard to be able to learn the language at the same time work towards my passion, Mm. which was dentistry. And to be honest, I... I'm not going to lie, I did not get into any dental uh, dental universities in the first go. I got straight rejections and on the day that I actually picked up my results, I got a call from Sheffield University to say that you've made it, we can offer you a place without any interviews because my results were great. And seven it was like, A stars. Seven A stars, it's yeah. It's just unheard of. <laughs> to be honest, it was hard because at that point, uh, it was hard, it was it was easy to give up mm. at that point thinking, well, I haven't got a place in dentistry, so why try? Mm-hmm. But there came a point and I thought, well, what if I try and show them what I'm made of Mm. and hopefully they will notice that they'll see that and maybe one day this will work out, which is exactly what happened. So it was at that point onwards that I thought nothing can stop me. So that's why when I went into university, I basically worked as hard as I could after finishing uni. I basically done a year of training in maxillofacial departments mm. and just working with like head and neck cancer patients, mm. um, sort of temporomandibular joint problems, mm-hmm. um, sort of trauma patients. And it sort of broadened my knowledge and my view of dentistry, that dentistry wasn't just about teeth. Mm-hmm. Um and from then onwards, uh, my passion always was in cosmetics, like cosmetic dentistry was always my thing. Um, and from then onwards, basically, I enrolled onto multiple courses to be able to broaden my knowledge about um, different things like composite bonding, clear aligners, like Invisalign, smile designs and things like that. And I can't tell you how much I actually enjoy it. The long hours is I don't even notice the passing of time mm. because I look down and I think, 
gosh, it's like eight o'clock, nine o'clock and I'm yeah. still here. But <laughs> for me, the biggest, biggest, biggest satisfaction is a patient walking away with a smile on their face, which luckily it happens all the time. And oh. honestly, I'm so grateful for it. I think uh, that's really palpable, your passion, your commitment also. Um, and I, we share that ethos, don't we? Last night we were in the clinic and I know you're open to talking about yes. this. Um, you've gone from associate to patient and you came in yesterday because you're getting married soon. Yes. Super excited for you, bride to be. <laughs> and you wanted to have a little bit of treatment. In particular, you were concerned about your nose, but on facial assessment, I explained to you that your chin was slightly underdeveloped. So you're literally day one post-treatment of having post-surgical, non-surgical rhinoplasty and chin augmentation and you couldn't tell. But tell me how you feel. Honestly, like... I, I can't thank you enough. Oh. Like, it's always been, even though, like, most people turn around and say, do you know what, there's nothing wrong with you. But it's just noticing those imperfections that you just think, well, only you know about it. But it's not about how people see you, it's about how you see yourself. Absolutely. And I just wasn't happy with that feature. And you know what I absolutely loved about when I came to you? I asked you one question. I said, Yusra, do you think my nose needs doing? You looked at me and I went, yeah, so does your chin. <laughs> I love that honesty about you because that's exactly the way I am with patients because I'd rather be honest with them. I think, mm. okay, fair enough. You want this, mm. but it's going to look ridiculous without this. Mm. And you were absolutely right. Like yesterday when you were doing my treatment, you were so gentle. Like I was so nervous and I was trying to hide it because I as know. a healthcare professional, you want to sort of say, well, you know, I do it to patients every day and, yeah. you know, I want to sort of put that front on and say yeah I'm not scared like you know so you shouldn't be scared either but it is scary when someone comes towards your face with an easel it is scary yeah, of course uh, but no absolutely loved it and and the one thing I've noticed regarding getting married I've started to notice every imperfection I'm like mm. oh what about if I get my nose done my chin done my teeth done this that whatever and it's like I feel like there's that thing that so close to such a big day mm -hmm. you start noticing everything mm -hmm. and with myself I've noticed that in work majority of my clientele are people that are working towards a deadline yeah. such as a wedding day yeah. get a lot of people coming in going my wedding is this mm -hmm. you know this date would you be able to finish it you know like close to that date whether it's Invisalign whether it's smile design composite bonding um, obviously we do our best to sort of you know achieve that or at least get as close as possible to make sure they have the best day and you know this sort of particular thing that they're worried about doesn't sort of let them down mm -hmm. and you know on the day um but yeah I've, I've I've honestly noticed that that you know you do start noticing every imperfection when it comes close to that time mm -hmm. But yeah, I, lo I love a challenge, so bring it on. <laughs> it's human psychology, I think, also. It's it's brides-to-be, naturally, are so aware that they are going to be the centre of attention. It's their day. The husband is important as well, of course, but <laughs> they are very aware that there's going to be lots of photographs, everyone's eyes are on them. You can't hide and you can't pick your angles because everyone's going to be taking photos. So I think it's very nerve-wracking. So it's not just weddings, it's speakers, it's CEOs, it's people who are about to deliver... <clears throat> a big speech on national stage or get onto national television. I see a lot of those patients as well who are really concerned about a feature on their face and who see it all the time when they're on camera. And that's often what drives them in. And trying to, you know, for aesthetic treatments like yesterday, you had a non-surgical rhinoplasty, chin augmentation, you're here today, no one can tell. There's no bruising, there's no downtime, you can crack on. With dental treatments, Sometimes, particularly when we're talking about crooked teeth, for example, the traditional options were quite restrictive in terms of being able to attend these events without the whole world knowing that you're having treatment. Exactly. And sometimes we don't want the whole world, why, world to know. We want to keep it a little bit subtle. Um, and I think that's what the newer, more exciting, innovative technologies offer our patients. That level of discreet treatment that can fit into their lifestyle rather than them having to fit into the dental treatment. And coming from a background in maxillofacial surgery, you know, both of us have had a background in that. I spent three and a half years doing maxillofacial surgery, which I absolutely loved and has given me skills now, which enable me to, for example, assess a face holistically. Like when you said to me, do I need my nose done? 
Um, I remember that in the waiting room. And he said, be honest. And I said, well, we can tweak this, but actually it's your chin. And what I find is often, very often, patients will come and say to me, I really don't like my nose. Can you straighten my nose for me? Or I don't like the bump on my nose or I feel my nose is big from my face. But actually it's not the nose. It's the underdevelopment of the mandible, which is very, very common. And yesterday when you, you know, initially you said to me, I didn't even realize it was my chin. Now that I'm looking at the before and after photos, I see that difference. And that's, that's the idea actually is delivering that kind of breathtaking result without anyone having to know that they've had treatment, but also doing a really comprehensive holistic facial assessment. So when I was doing maxillofacial surgery, one of the main things that I was doing was treating patients with orthognathic discrepancies. So for example, we call it craniofacial disproportion, an underdeveloped jaw or an overdeveloped jaw. Some people call it an underbite or an overbite. And often these patients were coming at the age of 18 or below, so quite young, because it was on the NHS. And in order to treat them, they would have comprehensive fixed orthodontics, so fixed braces, train tracks, otherwise known as train tracks, and then surgical intervention, which involved breaking the lower jaw and resetting it or breaking the upper and lower jaw and resetting it, and then splinting their jaw together to correct the bite. So years of treatment, surgery to the face, downtime, significant downtime, and also, unfortunately, a massive psychological adaptation that they're not quite ready for at that tender age and not discreet at all because they're going out looking very different. Objectively, yes, better. But remember that they've grown up with this face. They're looking in the mirror and they're saying, I, I don't recognize myself. They're trying to get to terms with all of that, plus manage the pain, plus their, splint, their upper and lower jaw is splintered together. They can't eat. They're drinking through a straw. They lose a lot of weight. And then the whole world says to them, oh my God, you've had surgery. What's happened to your face? So they're having to contend with everyone else's opinion. And that is when I realized the psychological impact of the treatments that we do, and also the importance of lending support to our patients pre and post treatment, managing their expectations alongside that journey, which I know you're fantastic at. And you said earlier, it's not just about dentistry. This is a combination of art, science, people. Every person that I've come across that is a really good practitioner that thrives in their work. You and I were in the clinic until 9 p.m. last night, enjoying every minute of it because we love what we do. But it's not just the artistry, it's the people management, it's the relationship building, it's supporting, it's creating empowering transformations inside out. It's seeing someone walk away with a smile on their face and giving them that confidence and joy. That comes with human management as well, psychological adjustments. And so that's when I thought, hold on, there must be something that we can do that isn't as traumatic to patients, that isn't going to take away so much of their life. Like it's a big life cost, right? Time out of work, time out of studies, the whole wide world knowing, the pain of it. <clears throat> and that's how I personally discovered non-surgical treatments and how I went down that field. And alongside that, I did orthodontics for a very long time, up until 2017, when I put my, down my drill and said, you know, I'm going to focus now on facial aesthetics alone. And what I, what I found is that beautiful marriage between dentistry and facial aesthetics meant I could deliver this facially aesthetic driven smile design with minimal trauma, minimal downtime. No one had to know. They, and it was a fantastic alternative to a surgical treatment that nobody used to talk about before. Absolutely. You know, I'm talking about 15 years ago now when I was in hospital working in maxillofacial surgery. We never gave our patients options of non-surgical treatments. It wasn't spoken about. And these are young people who often now come to me and say, I wish I knew of this option. So I think it's incumbent upon us to take on the responsibility of educating, to say, listen, surgery might be an option. It might be great for you. Fixed braces might be great for you, but there are other alternatives that are less invasive, that give really fantastic aesthetic results, but also functional improvements. Because when we're talking about, you know, for me, I do the craniofacial. I can improve the position of the mentalis muscle, the chin muscle. I can improve ellipseal using dermal filler, soft tissue augmentation, so filler in the chin, I can reposition the chin point, but I'm no longer doing the orthodontics. You're doing the orthodontics where you're aligning the teeth and then, you know, we're working together in tandem to, to do this. And what a fantastic option for patients. 
So I want to talk about this non-surgical option, this non-surgical solution. I've done a whole podcast on chin augmentation. So if anyone does think that they might have a weak chin or an underdeveloped chin and wants to consider a non-surgical option, that's the podcast to listen to. But today I want to talk about the dental alveolar disproportion. And what I mean by that is teeth crowding, um, maybe teeth that are not uh, well set. Uh, you might have a gap or an overbite where the upper teeth are sticking out more than the lower teeth. You might have crowding of your teeth. You might have TMJ problems, temporomandibular joint dysfunction, pain, clicking, grinding. Um, there's so many different things, cr you know, crowding of the upper teeth. And I want to talk about the options for patients that are not as invasive and don't have as much of a life cost. So let's talk about that. If you had a patient who came to you who said, I really don't like my teeth. And knowing what you know now, having that insight, being in a facial aesthetic practice, I know that you're aware of the, the assessment of the craniofacial position. And you can say to them, well, you might need your chin and you can go and see the facial aesthetic team. But you know, my job is limited, I think, in terms of what I can offer them for with their teeth. And it's incomplete without their teeth. So often I say to them, you need to go and see Dr. Almira for the next stage. So when a patient is coming to you saying, I really don't like, uh, something's going on here, how do you manage that consultation? To be honest, I feel like these days we are heading more towards minimally, minimally invasive dentistry. And I absolutely love that because back in the days we used to be so aggressive, mm. uh, which still does happen, uh, whether it's abroad dentistry, whether it's in the UK dentistry, it's still happening. And world is moving towards everything minimally invasive, mm. whether it's teeth, whether it's face. And I think that's a beautiful approach yeah. because work with what you've got mm. is always mm. my sort of number one. Um, what is so that's like? it. And um, what I absolutely sort of enjoy doing is combining multidisciplinary things. Like, for example, a patient comes to me and says, listen, Elmira, I don't like the look of my teeth. And... I don't go, okay, let's have a look. I always ask. I always take about 10, 15 minutes just to listen. Mm -hmm. Because by listening to the patient, they give you all the answers. And for example, they say, well, I don't like the fact that my teeth are crowded. Don't like the color of them. Don't like the shape of them. Perfect. I've got something to work with. And then my assessment starts. So okay, let's have a look, let's check your gums, let's, let's check your teeth, make sure everything is nice and healthy because as you're probably more than aware, we need a strong foundation to work on. Same. And if the foundation isn't right, everything is going to come crashing down. So for me, number one is make sure that patient is healthy. They've got, the oral health is excellent before mm. we move on to the next stage. That's so, paramount. That's it. <laughs> um, and I'm very, very transparent with patients. Mm. Patients that come to me and say, I want this particular treatment and I'm not going to budge from that. Mm. It's unfortunately, it goes against my ethics and ethos mm. of, you know, what I'm trained and mm. how I want to practice dentistry. It's come with an open mind of, you tell me your problem, let's fix it together. Mm -hmm. So with... Sort of um, crowding, we normally sort of offer um, Invisalign treatments, which has been really, really popular amongst all my patients. Um, again, it's a very case dependent treatment. You have to definitely be suitable for it, which goes back to the consultation phase, making sure teeth and gums are nice and healthy. You do qualify for this treatment. It's not too complex for it. But the beauty of this treatment is that it's very popular amongst adults because adults don't want anyone to know they haven't treatment done. Mm -hmm. They want it to be as discreet as possible and they want it to be relatively quick. Mm -hmm. So... Obviously, with Invisalign and clear aligners, we sort of tick in the box regarding appearance. And we also tick in that box that it's a bit faster than train track races. Um, and again, back to the point we said about special occasions, such mm -hmm. as weddings, special events. It's got that beauty of sort of, you know, we work towards a time timeline Um but if we don't meet it on, on your special day, we've got as close as possible to your perfect. Mm. Take them out, leave them to a side yeah. and crack on, you know, have a good day. Don't mm. think about now I can't, you know, on the photos, I can't smile properly. I'm going to have to smile with my lips, lips yes. closed because you can see these chain tracks. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I think it's, it's brilliant. Mm -hmm. It's because as you rightly said, 
loads of people lose their confidence mm -hmm. just because they feel like, oh, people are looking at me. All of a sudden it's just like I've got these or I've had the surgery or I look swollen or I've got these train tracks in. They look at you and you think, well, oh, do you know what? Like, why is she smiling with her lips, you know, mm -hmm. um, sort of not closed? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's unfortunately, you can't control how people think. Mm -hmm. And majority of the public do think that way. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a really actually interesting point because you can't diminish the impact of not feeling confident in your own self. And so often patients hold back from smiling, as you said, or cover their mouth. So sometimes, yes, they'll purse their lips to cover their teeth because they don't feel confident or they feel embarrassed about their teeth. So they're trying to hide it. But then what that actually translates to is hiding joy. And everyone has the right to express joy unashamedly, unapologetically. So I think that's the crux, right? It's empowering them to smile without reservation. Exactly. Every single day, but particularly when it's a big day. And yeah. I know this is something that you're passionate about because your wedding's coming up as yeah. well. Um, sorry to well, interrupt that's, you. No, that's, um, that's absolutely fine. The, the one thing is that when a patient comes to me, as long as they're open and sort of willing to listen and take that advice on board, because at the end of the day, when you've been doing a job for so long, mm. you sort of know what you're talking about. And as you rightly said, again, when uh, you try to fix something, but something else is not right, the whole thing doesn't look right. So I love the fact that like, if a patient comes to me and goes, well, I don't like this, I've, I don't like that. I've heard about this, but what do you think? Mm -hmm. I love that because the patient is open. They've already openly admitted that they want your advice on something and they want to get from point A to point B. And I always, without a doubt, ask my questions, I ask my patients um, this question, bring me a picture of what your ideal looks like. Mm -hmm. I love to see that because mm -hmm. if the ideal is something that, you know, your teeth are slightly brighter, but you've still got the slight imperfections and then yes, maybe things like Invisalign is just enough for you. Mm -hmm. Well, if you bring a picture to say that the teeth are perfectly straight, everything is the same colour, the same length, things like that. And if that's what your ideal is, and everyone's ideal is different, what's your ideal might not be my ideal. Um, and it's important to establish that with the patient, to know what the perfect looks like, mm -hmm. so that I can deliver that perfect. So I know I'm guaranteed with a patient that is going to walk away happy. Mm -hmm. um, and that can be quite difficult. That can be quite difficult for patients who don't know what their perfect is. And I know that we, so we have this little QR code that patients can discreetly scan in the clinic or behind the toilet door. Because what I hear a lot is patients go, I want my smile to be better, but they can't envisage it. It's hard if they don't have that creative mind. We look at each other, we look at patients and immediately our mind can see that end result. It's, you know, we can, we can env envisage that. Therefore we can create that. But for patients, sometimes they go, I don't like my teeth. I want them to be straighter. But then when we say, okay, well, do you want them rounded? Do you want them longer? Do you want them square? Well, I've got the perfect <laughs> answer for that. <laughs> exactly. Tell me. <laughs> uh, so we basically utilize software. So patients that AI. actually are not yeah. uh, happy with what they yeah. um, sort of, basically don't, they don't know what they want mm -hmm. sort of thing that we basically go, okay, mm -hmm. let's put something together and see if you like that. Mm -hmm. And then we can start modifying from that point. Mm -hmm. So what I always do, take a before picture, then using the AI, basically produce an after result. And then we start, that's our starting point. Then we mm -hmm. can start the refinement process. Mm -hmm. So let's say I'm giving them something that looks dead natural with the two front teeth slightly longer than the rest of the, you mm -hmm. know, rest of the teeth rounded corners, you know, like size of the teeth and stuff like that. They all could be altered. Mm. And I love when the patients see that, first of all, they're very, very impressed. They're like, mm -hmm. oh my God, like I never pictured myself, like what I will look like with my new teeth. And it's just nice to be able to visualize that. Yeah. And that also gives you an idea. Okay, based on this, I want more square teeth, one more oval shaped teeth, more triangle shaped teeth. Mm -hmm. And you know, want them brighter, shorter, longer. I don't like, let's say, you know, like the gummy smile, uh, even though I'm thinking, okay, the problem's my teeth, but actually you fix my teeth now. And based on this AI, I'm now noticing my gums. Yeah. But that's, that's, that's the beauty of multidisciplinary approach yes. that we were saying before. Yeah. It's being able to visualize what your final result could look like Absolutely. and being able to pick on those imperfections 
before it happens mm. so that we've got an action plan for it and I absolutely love that um I do have patients who have basically come to me again with um I don't like to look off my teeth and the first time I've looked I've just thought you know what it's not the teeth that stands out it's the gums mm. and if we can perfect the gums and the teeth together mm. we can deliver something that the patient is going to be delighted with mm -hmm. basically mm -hmm. um so that <coughs> excuse me I have this annoying lingering cough um with regards to that smile that smile uh, stimulation that transformation stimulation use utilizing AI AI I think is the, is where all mods, modern it's crazy, medicine is moving it? towards it has incredible potential to to support us in in our smile designs and facial aesthetic treatments and skin treatments you name it uh, it has to be used with caution. It's a double-edged sword, but it's amazing because, I, again, it allows patients to visually see potential change. What I'd like to do is, can we put a link? We can add a link onto the blurb and maybe over here where patients can click onto that little link and take a picture of themselves, upload their photo. It takes about 60 seconds and get that transformation. They will be able to visual, visualize what a smile transformation can look like. So we'll give them the... Yes. Yeah, the little code and you can a little enjoy secret that. as well. Little secret, yeah. There you go. Enjoy <laughs> Everyone that. Everyone thinking we get clever. <laughs> Whereas technically, it's a computer doing the job. <laughs> so, if a patient then comes in and says, "Okay, I would like um, Invisalign," but actually they are a bruxist and they have lots of chips to their teeth, and they also want to improve on the the appearance of those teeth, what would that treatment plan look like? Okay, it's a difficult question to answer mm. because without seeing the patient's heart to tell. Yeah. Depending on obviously the severity of bruxism or grinding your teeth, um, I normally first start by addressing the bite, mm -hmm. basically what we call occlusion, mm -hmm. making sure that we've got the correct bite because some people tend to have a relatively what we call edge-to-edge -edge bite mm -hmm. where the top sort of teeth meet with the bottom teeth that's edge to edge mm -hmm. um, and they tend to show a lot of a uh, sort of tooth wear pattern mm -hmm. whereas by basically improving the bite mm. maybe you could prevent further tooth wear you can't sort of bring back what's already happened but yeah. you, maybe you can prevent it from happening mm. again in mild cases where the teeth are slightly worn down patients actually accept mm. the teeth in the shape and form that they are but they just want, don't want it to get any worse. Invisalign on its own is perfect. Mm. And address that grinding problem in mm. the nice using things like gum shields mm. to make sure even if you're grinding, you're grinding your gum shield rather than your teeth away. Mm -hmm. But if that's sort of more severe, uh, we could sort of dive into things like composite bonding, which again is minimally invasive. Uh, no shaving or minimal shaving is involved in composite bonding, especially if your teeth are well aligned, that we don't need to sort of create space for things like composite veneers to go on. Then we could basically just do adding onto the teeth to make them look like the way that mm. they did before. Mm. Um, or in more severe cases, we could sort of, you know, um, consider minimal thickness veneers and things like that to be able mm. to restore the teeth back to the shape that they were or to the shape that the patient desires. Mm. There's a lot of options out there, but mm. as I say, I One always... One size doesn't fit all, right? Exactly. And I always tend to start with the most minimally invasive mm. and work my way up because mm -hmm. I always, especially consider the age of the patients, I think, okay, you start so early having teeth shaved down. By the time you're older, and obviously everything is on a lifespan, let's be honest, you know, nothing is, you know, forever. Um, with things like that, I always think, okay, if we start from that most invasive option at first, mm. what are we going to do next? Absolutely. And I think it's really important for patients to understand you only have one set of adult teeth. I say this to my children all the time. You need to brush the teeth you want to keep. When they're in bed, if they haven't brushed their teeth, have you brushed them? No. Off you go to brush your teeth because otherwise they might, you, if you have decay and, you know, these things happen, we can restore, hence restore to dentistry. But no filling is permanent. No reconstructive treatment is permanent. Um, when we're talking about crowns, bridges, implants, fillings, they all eventually fail. The question is when? Is it five years or 10 years or, or longer? So as you said, you want to go back to nature, keep, the, keep what you have. 
When it comes to teeth, unlike broken bones, you can heal a broken bone. You can't actually heal a broken tooth. Once a tooth structure is gone, it will not regenerate. Who knows what the future holds, but at present, that's a, that's a reality. So it's very important that people understand that. And I think the value of now we're in interesting times where everyone wants transformation now or yesterday. You know, like we're on the Amazon Prime now <laughs> type of generation. I'm like that. I want something delivered, uh, go on. And I'm like, can this be delivered in two hours time tomorrow? You know, when I was growing up, it'd be like two weeks waiting time. And I think more and more people want quick transformations. And whilst the options that we have nowadays, unlike fixed braces, we know that Invisalign can create transformation in a matter of weeks, not years, months, not years. You know, I remember doing a case that was really quite complex that when I was doing um, orthodontic treatment and was working with the, the labs, the lab said to me, we really don't think this is an appropriate case. We think it's too complex and she needs fixed braces. And she was adamant she was not going to have train tracks. It just, she was, you know, she felt that she was too old for it. She was worried about stigma. She didn't want her family to know. She was picking up the children from school. She was worried about how she would be judged at work. And clear aligners was the only way she would move forward. And knowing that that was her only option and knowing that she literally would hide her smile, never express joy because of her teeth. I was so really committed to delivering that change. And I remember her speaking to Lab and saying, look, this is really important for this lady. And she had found me because her daughter was called Yustra. This is 10 years ago. I'll never forget it. And she said, I just feel like you're the one to help me. And I've been turned away from so many dentists. And I thought, oh God, you know, no pressure, but I need to help this lady. And I said to Lab, look, just trust me on this. Make the aligners. I will walk her through this. And the change that she got was phenomenal. I'll share the before and after results. And that was in 18 weeks using clear aligners alone. So we can create phenomenal change, but it's not overnight transformation. And I think if you are going to take shortcuts, I talked about this on one of my podcasts, you know, taking a, a, what you consider a short, cheap ch trip to Turkey, having your teeth cut down to little Stomps, pegs. yeah. And having orthodont, uh, sorry, having crown on crowns on them, predisposes you to a lifetime commitment of failure. Crowns are actually sold as veneers, unfortunately. That's sort of that part of miscommunication as well. Yeah, you need to be transparent with the patient. You need to tell them what they have in. Yes, they deserve to know what they exactly. have in their body. Yeah, and I feel like if a lot of people had the knowledge mm. about what potential complications mm. could arise. Absolutely. Maybe it would turn half of them away. Education is power. Teeth are important because teeth are how we communicate with others. Everyone, me and you are connecting with each other based on our eye contact and our smiles. Yes. That's how we express joy. And psychological studies have shown that when you are meeting someone for the first time, the first thing that you look at is the eyes, then their teeth. That's just human nature. So teeth are important. We can't diminish from that. But it's really important that if you are seeking dental care, you're doing so from an ethical, honest provider who's going to safeguard you, not for, just for today or tomorrow, but for a lifetime. And I know I've heard you speak so much about this. Uh, and I'm always quite in wonderment when I hear you. I'm in awe when I hear you because you deliver it so well and so eloquently and so honestly <clears throat> without sugarcoating. And I really respect that about you because I find it rare that I... I'm surrounded by practitioners who are not afraid to say no. And I think that, you know, when I'm teaching doctors, dentists, nurses, how to do facial aesthetics, the second picture, the second slide on my, on my course delivery is a picture of Donatella Versace and Michael Jackson. And I say, you have a responsibility here. And yes, the patient may have asked this, but you have a responsibility to guide the patient. You're taking needle to face. In your case, you're taking drill to tooth. You have a responsibility to safeguard the patient. And with that is the understanding that doesn't matter how much someone pays you, your moral value can't be bought. Absolutely. Regardless of how many thousands or millions are thrown in your face, your moral values should never be bought. Exactly. It needs to be stuck in stone. And I've seen you manage really challenging conversations with patients. Um, <clears throat> and... You lead with honesty and integrity. Always. And it's incredible because I've heard you say no and you explain why. 
And actually, when I met your um, colleague, he said to me, Elmira is amazing <clears throat> and everyone loves her and she's always getting flowers and chocolates and gifts. And the reason why is because you educate your patients. It's not just, this is what you're having or do you want to have all veneers? Yeah, I'll do all your veneers. 30K, thank you very much. You say to them, no, actually, that's not in your best interest. Here's what I would advise to you instead. These are the treatment options. This is going to serve you not just for today, but for years and years to come. And you explain it by, I want to be able to put my name to that work. Exactly. That's my signature. Yeah. And I, to be honest, like I always tell my patients, honesty is the best policy yeah. and I'm not afraid to speak the truth. Mm. The thing is, in the world that we live in, Obviously, everyone would like to read, you know, Google reviews, go shop around a little bit. And I always get, you know, like when patients get booked in for consultations, it's often that they have been elsewhere, has mm. had a consultation, has been told, yes, you can have composite plantain, yes, you can have air veneers, yes, you can have Invisalign, you know, you can have all of this. And for me, it's never been a matter that I'm happy to take your money because you want this. And at the end, I'd say, well, you wanted it. It doesn't work that way. Mm. And if I want to be proud of the work I'm delivering mm. and putting my signature on that, I need the patient to be on board with me mm. saying, well, okay, you want composite bonding and you want veneers, but there's a more fundamental problem here that we need to address first mm. before we place all of this fancy work to make mm. sure that this lasts Absolutely. because longevity for me, no one has got spare money. Mm. Like it's hard earned money. Mm. Patients that are spending this money to get the work done, mm. they expect a certain standard. Mm. And I'm not happy to reduce those standards because I want a patient to confidently walk away. And if anything happens to that work, comes back and say, no problem mate, I'll fix it. <laughs> Sit down, don't you worry. Yeah. Because I know in the first place, I've thought about those complications that could arise and I've tried to address those prior to them happening. Mm -hmm. So that's why I feel confident that patient walking away, mm. knowing that the work I've given them is going to last. Mm. And if there's any problems, they know where to find me. I'm nowhere to hide. Amazing. I really respect that. I'm going to ask you, uh, when it comes to, we talk a lot about Invisalign and patients might be a little bit confused because there's a number of different things we offer in the clinic, uh, spark aligners, clear aligners, Invisalign. Generally speaking, what are we talking about when we're saying Invisalign? What does that actually mean? So Invisalign is basically clear aligners. So your train track braces are replaced by a set of clear removable aligners that have basically been carefully planned by an orthodontist uh, who basically sits there, looks at your scans, looks at your photographs, puts a perfect plan together. Every aligner is calculated to make certain movements in the teeth to basically get us to that desired point that we want. Mm -hmm. The beauty of this treatment that probably train tracks don't offer is the fact that you can see before you even have them placed mm -hmm. what your end result could look like. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Like, we don't like to buy before we try, right? Absolutely. That's it. I, I'm like that. I want to I wanna see what this is about before I buy it mm. because it's a lot of money. So I love the fact that, you know, um, after we've taken these photographs, scans, they go to our lab. The lab basically comes up with a plan, which is called ClinCheck. We get our patients back in and I always make sure at least 20 minutes, half an hour spent on ClinCheck's. This video gets played over and over again to make sure mm. patients are happy with every movement mm. where the teeth are going to end up. Mm. So basically tells you how many aligners you're going to have, how long the treatment roughly is going to take. Um, obviously, as long as everything goes according to plan and what your teeth will end up looking like and I love that because when the patient sees that goes actually Elmira do you know what I don't like the position of this tooth can we alter this or I don't like this little gap in between sort of the teeth can we sort of refine that mm -hmm. and basically we make sure from the start that we basically given something to the patient that she's going to or she or he is going to like at the end of the treatment mm -hmm. I love the beauty of that being able to see what you get in mm -hmm. 
Um, after the clincheck stage, as long as the patient's happy and no refinements are needed, we basically move on to the next stage, which is fitting the aligners. Usually about a half an hour appointments, which um, we place tooth coloured attachments onto the teeth, which basically essentially is um, equivalent to the metal brackets that you have placed on, but they're clear so no one can see them. Mm-hmm. Um, and we deliver the first I've set of aligners. I've got them on my teeth. <laughs> they're perfect, aren't yeah. they? Um, you basically deliver them the first set, you go through all the instructions with them, um, make sure everything is clear. And what I absolutely love about Invisalign is the virtual care as well. The busy lives that we live in, we want to reduce unnecessary transport and contact as much as possible because no one has got spare time in their hands mm-hmm. these days. We mm-hmm. all live a busy, busy life. So I love the fact that, okay, I've fitted your aligners, here's four aligners, here's the instructions, go home. Mm. But it's only when you're at home and you try them and you go think, you think, well, I've got a question now, what do I do? Do I just ring up and book an appointment? Mm-hmm. No, I'll just go on virtual care. Yeah. You can directly contact me. Mm-hmm. You know, I've, I'll answer any of the questions that you have. You can send, take pictures of yourself, send me any pictures if you're unsure about something. If I can answer it and avoid that having to bring you back in, time out of work, mm-hmm. you know, things like that, mm-hmm. you know, time out of spending time with family and things, um, then we will do that. And if I feel like, actually, do you know what? I feel like you should, you know, come to the clinic, then we advise you on that. But mm-hmm. I feel like it sort of filters out a lot of that unnecessary um, sort of, you know, having to come in and that with that virtual care. But it's, it's, I feel like Invisalign is really planned around people that are conscious about their appearance, live a busy life mm-hmm. and want things done relatively fast. And I think it ticks those boxes. Mm-hmm. But again, I can't stress enough that everything is case dependent and everything goes on assessments. Like we need to see you, we need to assess you. The one doesn't fit all. Mm-hmm. So Absolutely. It's, it's all about bespoke treatments really I think you made a really important point about the fact that we are living busy lives and nowadays with the advent of modern medicine and AI and our ability to communicate with patients has enabled us to maintain the care that we deliver even from afar which means these treatments are accessible to patients all over I've had fixed orthodontic treatment and um, unfortunately my teeth relapsed and so I'm now undergoing Invisalign Retention is, of course, very important. I think when it comes to limitations, contraindications, that all has to be discussed by a case-by-case basis because everyone's different. You may have underlying health conditions or dental conditions that need to be addressed beforehand. But I think another really important thing is, pay, you know, when I had my fixed orthodontic treatment, I was told I had to have teeth removed. Nowadays, um, that's something that we can often avoid with fixed uh, with um, clear aligners, which is which is what you said to start off with, with, which is maintain what you have. Back in the day, we used to think you had to remove all your wisdom teeth. Now we know that actually wisdom teeth coming out don't contribute to dental crowding and you don't have to take them out. And there is a, there is something called mesial drift. No matter if you take your wisdom teeth out or if you don't take your wisdom teeth out, you're still going to get dental crowding as you age. And that's why only 30% of the adult population have naturally straight teeth. 70% have some degree of crowding. And aesthetics is one side, confidence is one side, expressing yourself unashamedly, unapologetically, smiling and feeling great about your teeth is one side of thing, but function is another. When you have dental crowding, you're more likely to have gum disease because you're unable to floss in between your teeth. So there are health implications here. And I've done a whole podcast on the health implications of gingivitis and gum disease. But I think another really important thing that I'd like to end with is um, the concept of this sort of telecommunication. It's really, really helpful when we can do this with a trained professional. But sometimes, and I think when we had COVID, when there is tragedy, triumph often comes from tragedy, but so too does corruption. And there was the advent of some a, a company, I think it was called Smile Direct, yes. which was absolutely illegal, but managed to somehow get lots of patients who were absolutely inappropriate for orthodontic treatment to have orthodontic treatment, clear liners that was completely done remotely. So they would send them their impressions. They would take impressions at home, 
They got these clear aligners. They ended up losing teeth. They had tooth mobility, underlying gum conditions, um, infections, abscesses, roots, rotting of the roots, resorption of the roots. These are risks associated with orthodontic treatment. If you put too much pressure on a tooth, move it too quickly, too fast, with too much pressure, you 20% of those teeth end up being lost because they end up resorbing so fast that the, the, the essentially the roots is eaten away and the tooth becomes mobile or becomes infected. These are things that patients aren't aware of. And they think, oh, well, actually I can get Smile Direct, you know, online and it's cheap. Actually, pay peanuts, get monkeys. I say this all the time. And we now know that they've gone bust. Yes. They went bust and they left a huge amount of patients, not just in the lurch, but health-wise. Which we are picking up. Which we're picking That's, up, yeah, you know, yeah, sort the, of the fallout, exactly, and it's and, and it's upsetting to see that because now yeah. patients are having to pay on on top of that, yeah. yeah, and not only they're out of pocket, and not only they haven't made a profit, they're out of pocket, yeah, yeah, because you think do it cheap, do it twice, and Absolutely. that's I, I, this is the thing. I'd be mortified yeah. if, let's say, I said to you, uh, Doctor Yusha, like I'm not happy with my nose. You just go. I'll send you to fill us and post. Yeah. Here's the instruction. Just do it yourself. It's that yeah. easy to do. Yeah. I don't want to do it. Yeah. Because I want to go to someone yeah. who knows what they're doing. Yeah. yeah. And it's, as you, as again, you rightly said, we need to have a healthy foundation yeah. before we put something like that. You know, if periodontal disease or gum disease is not addressed, if mm. decay is not addressed, whilst you're straightening your teeth, your gum disease could get worse. Mm -hmm. Your teeth could start snapping. Mm -hmm. You know, you could get sensitivity. You could get tooth pain. You mm -hmm. could get flare ups from the uh, from the nerve. Mm -hmm. You might need root canal treatments if mm -hmm. you put too much force on a tooth. Mm -hmm. There's so, so much complications that could arise that I feel so lucky to mm -hmm. actually be part of this educational podcast to be able to at least tell a portion of people mm. what problems could happen and really do consider mm. before you go to companies like that, that would be doing things without supervision of an expert, mm. what could happen? Because a lot of people don't know and I don't blame them mm -hmm. because if you don't know, like I'm getting a lot of patients, like let's say uh, back to the Turkey subjects, you know, patients are coming from Turkey going, if only I knew. Absolutely. And do you know what? My heart goes to all of them yeah, because absolutely. I want to help all of them. But the thing is, I don't know what's being done. I don't know the damage underneath yeah. them. Like here, we don't, obviously we we sort of promote more minimally invasive dentistry. It's against all of our, you know, like Eat belief, code of conduct. And belief. <laughs> that's yeah. it. That to shave the teeth down, you know, to, uh, to that extent, yeah. to put something over them to make them happy. And the thing is, a lot of patients that I have seen in the past that now I see that I've been abroad and I've had the teeth done, there was a lot of crowding in the first place, but they haven't need no braces. They've gone over there. They've had basically teeth shaved down to nothing to be able to pull that tooth right back to make sure they, they look straight. Patients are made up because it's done fast. Mm. But look at the impacts of it. Mm -hmm. Like patients are coming with multiple abscesses, pain, now needing root canals, further treatment, more money spent. Mm -hmm. If you really thought about that in the first place and rather than spending that money little by little, mm -hmm. we sort of thought, okay, this is what I'm facing. Mm -hmm. This is the money that's needed to basically get to sort of properly. And we do offer things like finances. Mm -hmm. So in the long run, you're basically yeah. ending up paying the same amount of money anyway, mm -hmm. but at least just doing it once, doing it properly. I t totally agree with you. There are no shortcuts when it comes to healthcare. There are no shortcuts when it comes to dental health in particular. Um, this is something that I think is really important. And the whole point of this podcast is to educate and empower the public. Knowledge is power. And there is such incredible work that can be done to safeguard our patients' health, improve their smile, improve their function, improve their gum health, safeguard them for life. We don't want to create irreversible damage. But I think, as you said, a lot of the public don't know. They are unaware of the potential risk. Yeah. They don't they don't know about the risk of drilling their teeth down, causing that irreversible damage, potentially losing their teeth. They didn't know when they signed up to Smile Direct, they thought, fantastic, cheap and cheerful, exactly. but actually pay cheap, pay twice, as you said. Um, and, and now that that's gone and you know that they have gone bust and we're dealing with the fallout, it's always very sad when we are picking up the complications and seeing these patients in distress. We can help. Um, we can't help every single patient. I wish we could, 
But I hope this podcast goes far and wide and people become aware that it's really important that if you are seeking dental treatment, like any other healthcare treatment, you go to a medical professional. You don't try a DIY at home because unfortunately the fallout, the impact um, is catastrophic and devastating to deal with. And patients often don't realize that at the beginning, but it comes out eight months later when their teeth are falling out. And we don't want that for any human being. Thank you so much for joining me on the podcast. It's been such a pleasure to have you. It's been a pleasure to be here. Honestly, thank you so much. Thank you. (laughs)